Okay, so the first thing we need to do with the old Seth Thomas is to get this spring in here. And this is the power of this. Now this is an original spring. The old, the newer springs will have an S shape to them. This is the original probably, or it's uh, at least a good 75 years old. But this is late 1800s, uh, this watch. So i got to wind this by hand. We don't have a winder, so it's not too bad with the big fat spring like this. Then we get down to the end, it kind of pops right in. And then we'll get this arbor out, put it in. This is what helps wind that spring inside this barrel. And it, this is when I realized that I didn't clean the arbor. It's dirty, it's got lubrication on it. The spring's nice and clean, I cleaned it, but it's really weak. I don't think it has much power and I don't think it has enough power to run this watch. Finding a, a, a new spring is very difficult. This is the cover here. I tried and tried to get this thing on. Um, usually I have a tool that snaps right on. It's in the tool right now, but it doesn't snap on and I can't figure it out. And there's a little, you can see the little piece of that lip coming out, but it's probably within the tolerances for this watch. Well, we're gonna start with the winding works. And that's what it is, just a kind of a gear that fits on the stem. It's a key actually that's embedded in the watch housing. So it's not a true keyless movement. With the cover on and these goofy screws that they use are super hard. They don't work very well and they don't stand in the uh, hole on their own. So it takes a lot of time to get these down, but they're pretty big. So we're going to start with the train of gears here, the gear train, and this is the center wheel. And we've got to add the uh, pallet fork here. And this is a strange looking pallet fork. It doesn't sit very well uh, in the pinion, in the hole you can see there's a hole it drops into. And this is what regulates the watch lets out the power from the spring and now we're gonna put all the gears in place hopefully not disturbing the piece you put in prior so this is the escape wheel and this is what allows the power to escape and this wheel is contacted I don't know if you can see them but there's two uh, rubies there. They're synthetic stones that tick and talk off of that wheel. Here's the fourth wheel. This is bottom of this wheel actually is the seconds hand on the face of the movement at the six o'clock position. There's an intermediary wheel. I think this is called the third wheel. Um, the second wheel is the one in the middle. And the first wheel is actually this. This is the the barrel with the uh, spring in it. This is all the power. And this is really hard to get in. Now, I'm not sure if I'm doing this in the correct order. I think I am. But I'll ultimately just get it in here and set it up kind of at an angle. And then I just kind of pop it down in there. And there it goes. Now the other wheels, they're out of alignment now. So counting the five wheels and the uh, pallet fork, there are six pinions that need to be aligned with this top plate. I've never done six pinions before ever. I have no idea how we're going to, and it's really 12 points because you've got the bottom plate and the top plate. So you have 12 points you have to line up. It's very difficult. And this does take me a long time. So you can see that uh, protrusion at the top there. You can, that's the second wheel sticking out. And you want to be very careful. You can bend these things really easy. So we're just going to go in here and work and try to align these pinions with some oiling a little oiler I'm using just to move it around and after about an hour I think I get them all in and this is how you test it if it moves they're good if it doesn't like it doesn't here it's no good but do get them all aligned and the next thing we're gonna put in is the heart of the watch this is the uh, balance wheel it's got a, a jewel at the bottom that has to sit in between the tines of the pallet fork and 
the pinion has to align and drop into the hole. So you have two things you have to accomplish here. It's very difficult to do. And be very careful because there's a hairspring on this balance wheel that is extremely delicate. You can't touch it and a, a good jolt of wind will bend it. So we'll work on this for a while. And it just doesn't seem to go in. You can see there's a gap under my finger with that uh, that fork. So finally we get it in. It just isn't working like I thought it was. And this, this should be spinning here. So I'm going to make some more adjustments just to see why it's not. And lo and behold, there's that gap again underneath that bridge. Finally get that dropped in. And this is kind of what it should look like when it's uh, spinning free. There's no power to it, so it's not going to remain ticking and talking. But all you need to do is uh, put the screw in, but instead we drop it down in here. So game of operation takes place. And you can see this, watch this hairspring come out. When I see that when I grabbed it, I almost ruined the whole watch right there. Once you ruin that hairspring, you're done. And so we'll lock her down here. And then we're gonna, there you go. And that's what it should look like when it's moving. All right, I'll flip this guy over. Go to the dial side. Now we're gonna get everything situated. This is the click. And this is somewhat difficult. This is an interesting way to do the click, but it seems to work. Now that spring is under tension right now, and I'm gonna add some more tension to it so it's gonna wanna fly across the room at 60 miles an hour. But every now and then, you get lucky and I figure I'm just gonna pro apply some pressure and move it out onto the top of this lever and I hope it stays and I can feel that that spring is not flush it's bent a little bit so I want to get this cover plate on quick before it goes flying away and this takes me some time because I've failed to check my reference photos to see where it's actually supposed to go figure it out and drop in some screws we'll get it all put together and I had some difficulty with it it's uh, evidently some kind of pressure plate that's holding on the bottom of the the click wheel on the barrel not quite sure why but uh, that's what it did and uh, just when I thought it was getting easy I got another another spring and this one's even funkier than the other one. So this is the uh, setting gears here. And this sets the time and it also winds the watch. And you can see that those holes are ovals. So these gears are going to be moving back and forth in there. There's a spring somehow. It's part of it. And then it's all covered up. So you can't really tell what's going on underneath it by this little thing here, this little bridge. But figure it out, and I still don't have that spring set properly. You can see it's underneath, it's on top of that gear. There it's now positioned properly, and that's how it's supposed to work. Yeah, it seems like it's doing its job. And this is what's known as the safety pinion, I think. Or this activates the safety pinion? I don't know. But when you pull this out, this little lever, it pushes down on that plate, which then engages all the wheels all the way to the center, and that allows you to set the time. And it does work, and the watch does wind. So we'll get that in, and here's the, this is a setting wheel. And then we're gonna put next to that is the cannon pinion, and this is pressure fit on um, all watches. But I can't get it on because it's not meshing through with this wheel here, so I gotta jog that wheel, and it's still not set. And I gotta give it a little tap there, and it snaps on, so I know it's ready to roll. Here's the hour wheel with the little uh, washer on there that keeps the dial away from the wheel. Put the dial on, put it in the case. Let's put some hands on. If you think this is hard, you'd be correct. It's very difficult to put these hands on and to align them because you want them both 
pointing at 12 o'clock when it is 12 o'clock. So we'll get these all set up. And we've got the hour hand on. Now we just match the minute hand to it. Get it all together. All right. And uh, wind her up. And it actually works. It uh, doesn't work well. Doesn't keep very good time, but yeah, it works. And it was fun.